I've done a lot of research on homemade mask design, and this is the mask I've settled on for my family at this point in time. It has a simple yet effective design. It's easy to sew and has a pocket that will allow us to add extra filters as we want. I buy high quality flat sheets like this when I find a good price on them. I generally use these to make bedding like fitted sheets, duvet covers, and pillowcases. Today, I'm using this for our face masks. This is a good choice because it's 100% cotton and has a high thread count, which means that it will repel liquid and filter more particles, and it has very little stretch to it. Cotton has been tested and proven to block anywhere from 40 to 90% of particles from the air. I'll be sure to include some studies in the description box below in case you're interested. I start by cutting all the finished edges off the sheet. I'm going to use these strips for the ties of the mask. It's great because that means less sewing for me. We need four strips of this fabric. Two should be 17 inches or 41 cm and the other two should be 12 inches or about 31 cm. Next we need to cut the fabric for the mask. I'm using a rectangle that is 34 cm or 13 inches by 20 cm or about 8 inches. Fold the fabric in half along the long edge so that the 20 cm edges meet. We're going to sew this in thirds. The top third will be sewn, then we'll advance the foot, skipping the second third, and sew the final third. Then trim the thread in the middle. This will allow us to more easily invert the mask when it's done. Take the fabric and fold the seam so that it is in the one third mark as shown. Now we'll take our ties and insert them. Be sure to take the 17 inch tie and place it at the top of the mask. This is the part that will cover our nose. And the 12 inch tie should be placed at the bottom with the wider two third area. Now we'll sew down this edge. I make sure to double or triple stitch the ties to ensure a strong hold. And I also make sure to open up that seam that is at the third so that we have a nicer edge. Do the same with the ties on the other side, making sure that you place the longer tie at the top of the mask. I found that it helps to fold the tie and then place it inside the mask. Stitch this side closed as well. Now that we have our package, I'm going to fold the mask in half and work on fitting the bottom chin portion. Make sure that the ties on the inside are away from that bottom portion. We don't want to cut the ties that are inside. From the center of the fold, I place a mark at a half centimeter, then another mark at the perpendicular edge at three centimeters. This is what I found that we prefer. If this is not a tight enough fit for you, you can always adjust that 0.5 centimeter by restitching it with a steeper angle. I recommend to go in half centimeter increments. I draw a line connecting these two points and cut out that triangle. Then open up the two sides and nest one corner into the other. This makes it a lot easier to sew this part closed. Once this is done, make a small V-shaped cut at the center, taking care not to cut through the thread. This allows the fabric to spread and better conform to our chin. Now it's time to invert the mask, and we're almost done. On the side with the pocket, I'm going to use my ruler here. At about 4 to 5 centimeters down from the top of the mask, I make a mark. Then go down 7 centimeters from there and make another mark. Repeat this on the other side. These points will help us to make our pleats. Fold inward at one of the points and then back out to make an accordion and be sure to line up those edges. Then I repeat this on the bottom, which is a little bit trickier because of the adjustment that's made for the chin. Just ensure that the edges are all parallel with each other. Now we'll sew down this edge to secure our pleats. It's important to move the ties out of the way of this line so that we don't sew those again. Using the dots, repeat this on the other side. Then trim off any visible loose thread, and that's it. The mask is ready to wear. 
If you want extra protection, it's a good idea to place some extra cloth inside the mask. I like to use a non-woven polypropylene material. This is the kind of material that's used in manufactured masks. Once you know what to look for, you'll see how prevalent this material is in our world. Reusable grocery bags, certain kinds of rice bags, electronic packaging, even this laundry bag from the Dollar Tree. There's no weave to them. It looks like some sort of pattern is stamped onto them. A few layers of this material tucked into the mask will definitely add more protection. I like that these are reusable and completely adjustable. All of us fit this one mask. For kid sizes, you can check out the video linked in the description box below, which is where I learned how to make this mask. I just adjusted it to fit my family's needs and preferences. While I think this mask is good, it's definitely not N95 material. In the past month, we've only left the house to mail our taxes, which we did by dropping it off at a contactless drive through mailbox at the post office. Whenever we do need to go out, we'll definitely be using this mask. And I will share if we do use a different mask, but for now, this is it. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're staying safe and well, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.